Sawyer just did this very revealing and important poll. Do you plan on converting your Sabotrack reservation into an actual order at current prices? 34.4% said yes, which seems low, but you have to realize that uh, about almost 40% of all of these people did not have a reservation, which means you have 60% left and 34.4% said yes. So that's more than half of the people that have a Sabotrack reservation that voted yes, I will convert my Sabotrack reservation into an actual order at the current price. That is a Big, big deal. Unofficially, Tesla has over 2 million reservations officially confirmed by Tesla, 1 million. So if half of these people converted their reservations into orders, you're looking between 500,000 to 1 million orders that Tesla can work on fulfilling right now. However, I think it is very important to be logical here and point out the fact that people that do follow Sawyer closely probably are huge Tesla fans, therefore they are more likely to convert their Sabbath reservation into an actual order. Personally, I do not make rash decisions. I plan things out. I think it through. I like to know that I'm making a decision based on logic instead of emotion. I want to first rent it, drive it for a day, see how I actually like it from my first-hand experience. And then I'll try to park it in a garage, see if it actually easily fits into my garage. Uh, we do have quite a few things in the garage, so we might need to move a few things out. And then I'll decide if I want to order a Sabo truck. It's important to point out that I have never ever even considered the idea of buying a pickup truck. And I don't really care about towing or any of that stuff. And despite all of that, I am actually considering buying a Cyber truck. And at first glance, Sawyer's poll to me looks very bullish. Because you have to remember the price has gone up by a lot and yet people are willing to convert their reservation anyway. In less than a week, this video is now the 11th most viewed video ever that Marcus Brownlee has produced. And he produced 1,600 videos in total so far. I think the Cyberdrug video will be the second most viewed video that Marcus has ever produced. I think the chances of that are very high. So clearly the Salvador has enormous interest. Tesla is reportedly planning to restart construction of the third phase of the Giga Shanghai factory, which is dedicated to producing a new $25,000 vehicle. That is of course really big news. And China is probably the best place for Tesla to quickly ramp up production of the next generation vehicle. Assuming that there are no issues geopolitically, that is a great location. So probably if Tesla is still going to build a factory in Thailand, it will be quite a bit later. And now there are a lot of questions about what is going to happen to a potential factory in India. After today's news, it is certainly a lot less likely to be built. Or if it will be built, then it will be probably later than whatever was expected until today. Based on this old rumor, we know that Tesla is planning to build 4 million next generation vehicles per year. Uh, 1 million of that was planned for China. I think in the long term it is inevitable that Tesla will build a factory in India, but the question really is, when? Building a supply chain over there is going to be difficult. And the people in India like really, really, really cheap cars. So perhaps Tesla is thinking, okay, well, we will have the next generation vehicle, but after the next generation vehicle, we will probably make an even cheaper and smaller vehicle. And that would be a perfect vehicle to sell in India. Money manager Ross Gerber just sold more Tesla stock. Only 400 shares, but he does have uh, tens of millions of dollars worth of Tesla stock in his client account, so I assume he's reducing their positions as well. It does make sense that Ross is selling some Tesla stock because he was so livid about the latest Elon Musk controversy to do with some Jewish people being upset with Elon. Cybertruck deliveries are beginning in the real world now as well. Tesla has started inviting some early reservations holders to take delivery of Foundation Edition Cybertrucks, which start at $120,000. I wonder how many of these there are. Foundation Series Cybertrucks are fully optioned and includes 
limited edition laser etched badging, premium accessories, charging equipment with power share, home backup hardware, all terrain tires, a physique capability, and more. This is the Cyber Beast tri-motor version. There's no range extender though. We just found out that Tesla operates fully autonomous drones at Giga Berlin. They actually count up to 12,000 pounds a day each. Yesterday we got delivery numbers in China based on the insurance data and the number was 17,400. Compared to previous weeks and previous quarters, yeah, this number is actually really good. And we are now officially ahead of every previous quarter that Tesla had. We are heading for a clear record quarter in China. What is a bit weird though is that Model 3 deliveries have not increased. They remain exactly the same throughout this whole time. The Model Y deliveries though did increase. If the number of refresh Model 3s is not higher next week, then it is very clear that indeed Gary is right here that Model 3 China weakness is more likely due to September price hikes on Model 3 Highland in China after the refresh happened right now. The difference between the Model 3 and the Model Y is very low. I would still go with a Model 3, but I prefer sedans over SUVs. Most people like SUVs, so yeah, the Model Y is a really good deal here. However, instead of decreasing the price of the Model 3, Tesla could further increase the price of the Model Y because Model Y deliveries are pretty strong or, which I think is more likely, Tesla is just going to cut the price of the refresh Model 3 by a little bit. Although we are seeing very strong demand for the refresh Model 3 in Europe, so perhaps Tesla will continue focusing on exporting the Model 3 instead of delivering it to everyone locally in China. We got Tesla's deliveries in Germany as well. This is a pretty weak month for Tesla in Germany. However, it is important to remember the context and that is that Germany right now is sort of in a recession. The UK also reported its deliveries and while the number is not high at all, please remember that year to date, it is 81% of last year's total. And 81% certainly sounds pretty good. There is one thing that's abundantly clear though in Europe, and that is that the Model 3 is a pretty big success in Europe. We sold about 50% more Model 3s in the second month of this quarter compared to the previous quarter. And that's with Belgium missing, so that number is probably going to go up by a little bit more. So it is safe to say that the Model 3 is certainly a success, so it's a bit weird to see the numbers coming out from China. Next week in China we will know if the Model 3 is a huge success at the current price in China. The car is certainly a success. We just may need to draw the price a little bit. In the meantime, South Korea reported its deliveries and it is not what many have expected. Many expected in Q4 to have low deliveries for South Korea, but actually the deliveries are going really strong. Just with two months already, we exceeded all of the deliveries of Q3 and it's 99% Model Y so wait until they actually also get the Model 3. One possible reason why the Sabotor has been delayed so much is because perhaps Tesla wanted to put some new technologies in the next generation vehicle but you don't really want to put some radical technology that you haven't really tried yet into a vehicle that is absolutely crucial for your company's success because just in case there are some issues that could create huge problems. But, for example, the steer-by-wire system and the 48-volt architecture is now put in the Cybertruck and Tesla will be able to uncover any issues with these new technologies and fix them with the Cybertruck, which is going to be somewhat high volume, but not really compared to uh, the next generation vehicle. Yeah, it will not really sell that many units. So that could be one possible explanation for the delay of the Cybertruck. I don't think it's a big reason, but I think it's certainly very possible. We have heard so many people say that EV demand is slowing down, but <laughs> take a look at this. Sales of passenger EVs are on pace to hit a record 14 million this year, up 36% from 2022. In the US, sales are growing even faster and will be up 50% this year. And generally, what you hear is, oh, uh, in the US, EV demand is slowing down, but in the whole world, uh, maybe not so. 
much? Well, the chart tells you the opposite is true. <laughs> Strikes in Sweden against Tesla continue, but Tesla just opened a new service center and no one is striking there. However, there is some bad news in Sweden. The Court of Appeal gives the Swedish Transport Agency permission to appeal and pauses the district court's decision to let Tesla pick up signs from the manufacturer according to a press release. So Tesla cannot pick up the plates anymore, I guess. And now Denmark says that it would no longer transport vehicles to Sweden, Tesla's vehicles to Sweden. And a union in Norway also announced that it will join the blockade and will not deliver vehicles to Sweden through Norway. The Norwegian Union gave a deadline to Tesla which is December 20th. I'm not too worried about the Norwegian blockade because Tesla could still transfer vehicles from Finland to Sweden. It's not exactly convenient but it's certainly workable. The bigger concern is with Tesla not being able to pick up the license plates which means Tesla could not deliver any vehicles in Sweden, but because the court initially allowed Tesla to pick up the license plates, I think the court will eventually side with Tesla. Because that decision was made in one day. Typically, legalities take a long time, so I'm sure that Tesla has a strong case here. I'm not really worried here at all. We have new EPA data about the Sabo truck and we found out that the battery capacity is 122.4 kilowatt hours. So that initial rumor of the battery being 123 kilowatt hours turned out to be pretty much correct. The Sabo truck battery energy density at the pack level is actually pretty good. And the Tesla economist says the biggest deal here is that Tesla is able to achieve the 4680 energy density without using silicon in the anodes that we know of implying perhaps 15 to 20 percent more energy density is still to come which would be really good but of course it's all about scaling from here on and scaling 4680 batteries has proven quite challenging so far and james really said it best here in just three years tesla already has a battery pack in mass production and in a vehicle that has better pack level energy density than panasonic's 2170 cell packs in only the 4680 cell second iteration and before many other cost and energy improvements. Panasonic has been making batteries forever and Tesla only for a few years. This is incredible. Anyone who claims 4680 a failure because Tesla is behind its own ridiculous benchmark that it set for itself is not serious and needs to broaden their perspective. Absolutely 100% I agree with James here. So the button to open the Cybertruck door is actually a real button, not just a sensor, which I like. And supposedly it will break through up to an inch of ice, but Tesla is a company headquartered in Texas where it pretty much never snows. So that is uh, to be determined at a later date still. But an inch of ice is a lot. So if you have less than that, you are definitely fine. One takeaway on all these charts that nobody's talking about and the Wall Street's not talking about, I think it's important for the viewers. And there, there should be a line on there that says time and market. And <clears throat> the, I, I believe the, the Ford F-150 is approaching two years uh, from, from mass production. The Rivian is, is in that range as well. And Tesla's at zero. And so you're looking at time equals zero for Tesla pricing. And you're looking at time equal 20 to 24 months for the competitive pricing. They've had 20 to 24 months to ramp their supply chain, to put cost reduction, to venture cost reductions in, and that's still where their pricing is. You're, you're comparing Tesla T equals zero pricing to Tesla, and not saying you, Herbert, but these these charts and, and, and Wall Street are, are, are doing that, and that's, that's actually not a correct. The way to look at it, if, you're, if you look forward, if you were to put Tesla at time equal two years, Tesla's number one, they're gonna have multiples of the scale of these projects, these other right. these other competitive, uh, and, and they're gonna, they have a history of taking their cost structure down faster because they have the scale, and because they have this rapid pace of, of, of introducing um, changes into the line. So I think it's an important takeaway of Tesla's at time equal zero and they're at time equal 20, 24 months in market. This one Tesla store on Black Friday had 11,000 people visit the store and uh, test drives and interior showings are soon to be expected, but they haven't started yet. A lot of people right now are talking about lithium prices and the free fall continues. This is not just good for Tesla's vehicles. This is really good for Tesla's mega packs. The costs can keep coming down. The CEO of Stellantis just made a comment. He expects before the end of the decade that automakers could start to drop out of the market because of the electrification transition. In the US and in Europe, Stellantis 
Electrified vehicles are break-even, he said. But share what the actual financials like Ford does. There's a good chance that some of these brands that Stellantis owns are not going to survive. An autonomous vehicle startup Cruise, which is owned by General Motors, faces $1.5 million in potential fines over withheld accident details. But let's be honest, $1.5 million for... A multi, multi, multi billion dollar company is nothing. The next Chevy Bolt will arrive in 2025, the CEO of GM says, and I am sure it is going to be fire. I'm not joking, I wish I was. This is a bit hilarious. Lucid targets Tesla owners with a $2,000 discount called the Conquest Credit Bonus. But the only thing that Lucid is really seriously successfully conquering here is relatively low production compared to their targets. Originally, Lucid was planning to build 14,000 cars this year, but we will end up doing maybe about 8,000. They are making some changes, but will it be enough for next year? Troy is concerned about sharp edges at the Sabo truck. Jason Camisa said there are sharp edges. There is one spot in the episode where I actually did slice my hand open as I was just walking by. Jeff thinks that Tesla will coin the sharp edges for production trucks. It's not uncommon for pre-production units to not have that done. I guess the biggest concern would be not an adult leaning on the Sabo truck and hurting himself, but uh, kids running around the Sabo truck and playing around and then touching the Sabadrick and then hurting themselves accidentally. I personally am not concerned, but there are some people that are slightly concerned and a few that are very concerned. There was speculation that Elon was raising money for XAI, but Elon clarified today that XAI is not raising any money at this moment. Tesla just released a new video about the Sabadrick, which makes it look even better than before. A heavier truck in this kind of event will typically give you more momentum with the truck itself. So coming in here with a truck that's one of the lightest in this group, if not the lightest, and out pulling everybody else, really says something about the capabilities of the vehicle. Look, um, first, it's incredibly controversial, and we had a, an incredibly robust response to our survey. <clears throat> it was interesting to hear that two thirds didn't want it. And frankly, that was a lot better than we expected. I mean, across my family, it's polarizing. I personally love it. My wife doesn't like it at all. My two daughters are split. Uh, Leanne, who works on our team, doesn't like it. Pino likes it. And it, it's, it, it kind of makes people feel all sorts of different things, just kind of like the CEO of the company. We think it'll sell up to a quarter million over the next uh, couple of years, maybe over time half a million. And you know, it, it'll move the PL, but what's more interesting is the way the company continues to move technology forward. And because the Sabotruck is not a better company kind of product, Tesla can really experiment with many different features. And eventually, if mainstream consumers actually accept the stainless steel body, I think Tesla will come out with more vehicles that looks somewhat similar to the Cybertruck. Tesla is, is anticipating that it's going to lose half that credit for its Tesla Model 3 because of the new rules that Treasury put in place for entities of concern. At the end of the day, what really matters here is, in, in our opinion for the stock, is what they guide to for next year. There's a lot of negative sentiment with regard to what the volumes will look like in 2024. We're at 2.3 million in and in around. You know, there's a lot of whisper out there that they'll be in the low twos. And what this uh, this does, the, the the lack of an incentive is potentially create an air pocket in the first quarter. Maybe it means that the fourth quarter estimates or the, the uh, actual volumes are really good because people rush to the store, rush online to buy their Tesla, leaving a little bit of an air pocket. So uh, we'll see how this all shakes out. But at the end of the day, what really matters globally, can Tesla sell 2.3 million plus or minus vehicles next year? And for now, we think the answer is yes. This is sort of typical Wall Street thinking. The most important thing, the thing that matters is what Tesla is going to deliver next year. Not three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, but next year. I'm a lot more focused on will Tesla eventually sell 20 million vehicles? I think the answer to that question is yes. And that creates a lot more value than whatever number of vehicles Tesla will deliver next year. And George, when we factor in the Cybertruck here, Musk himself says it'll take 12 to 18 months before this new vehicle is, quote, a significant positive cash flow contributor. 
Is this more about sort of the, the halo effect for the brand getting people into perhaps some of the cheaper models, or is this really targeted at a very sort of small base of early adopters and, and Musk supporters when you think about the Cybertruck and who's investing in it? That's a great question. And, you know, it's not that cheap, right? Like Pras pointed out, it's, you know, upwards of uh, the, the, the version that's currently available is $100,000. And so it's not that you're not going to get significant volume like like the Model 3 or the Model Y, but there's so much interesting technology there that number one, it creates the halo effect that you're referring to. And over time, as the $60,000 version comes out, we think it actually will drive volume. And it, as you can sell it globally, right now it's limited to the US or maybe North America. Uh, but over time, you know, they get to quarter million, maybe half a million, but it's an exciting vehicle that looks different, obviously incredibly controversial. I know some people have called it an art piece that and Elon Musk should just stop production because it's so hard to make. Look, if they're gonna, in our opinion, they're gonna pull it off. They're, it'll initially result in a halo effect. Look at some of the viral videos on the internet. People are stopping to look at the vehicle on the street. You know, what, when was the last time that happened with a car? Unless it is a car that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, it just does not happen. But the Cybertruck is going to be just $50,000 for the rear wheel drive version. And eventually, I think that Cybertruck's numbers, delivery numbers, will somewhat meaningfully contribute to Tesla's total deliveries. It will be a material difference. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. That really helps the YouTube algorithm. My name is Matt Posius, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Thank you so much for watching.